So I feel that I am doing this uh, uh, review for future generations of gamers out there. Because if you are going to try to get this today, the RX 6700 XT at MSRP pricing, well, good luck. Nearly impossible unless you're willing to do what I have done, meaning shedding twice its advertised pricing at about a thousand dollars just so that I can offer you an unbiased opinion, you are welcome. Today, we are reviewing the Radeon RX 6700 XT 12G GB very own reference card, which comes with equally imposing looks and specs, ready to rock the very gaming foundation of your basement. And talking about future generations, if my grandson is watching, well, you're welcome. Indeed. You are welcome. In normal times, the RX 6700 XT should have been um, AMD's budget card. I mean, mid to higher tier budget cards. Priced at about $480 before taxes, it is here to compete against the excellent RTX 3060 Ti, which by the way I've reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so, for the 1440p gaming crown, about the most competitive segment of the gaming uh, market. So yeah, quite a big deal for AMD here. And this is not just another release because it comes equipped with AMD's brand new Navi 22 XT GPU based on its latest RDNA 2.0 architecture. And a big deal indeed because this is AMD's first GPU to really support real-time ray tracing. And, and well, uh, admitting that maybe Nvidia did not have such a bad idea after all. But I'm getting ahead of myself now, starting with the obvious. Our Radeon RX 6700 XT comes with an impressive cooling block, boasting two large 80mm fans. It remains a two slot tall video card, so easy to fit in about any builds out there. It has four display outputs capable of supporting no less than 8K gaming at 60 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second. Now, spec-wise, it is powered by a Navi 20 GPU, a 7 nanometer written die featuring no less than 17,200 million transistors organized in 2,560 shading cores, 160 texture mapping cores, 64 ROPs, and no less than 40 ray tracing, which is a first coming from AMD and was noticeably absent from its previous 5000 series, which absolutely snubbed the ray tracing technology, trying to kill it in the egg since it was Nvidia's biggest selling point of its back uh, then 2000 series. And indeed quite a chilling twist because not only does it validate Nvidia's um, initiative, of introducing real-time ray tracing onto its video card since 2018, uh, but it also places AMD for once as a catching uh, position, catching up after Nvidia, which is not always the case. Now, clockwise, our GPU has a base clock of 2,321 MHz and a boost clock of 2,581 MHz, about 500 megahertz more than its predecessor, the RX 5700 XT. But truth be told, um, I have been trying to overclock it, or I did overclock it quite a bit, and this is way below the real abilities of the Navi 22 GPU. It, actually, I could push it up to a whopping 2900 megahertz. So just imagine if you water cool this beast, this would be a complete different animal. Now, memory-wise, AMD leads the dance with 12 GB of DDR6 RAM, bust at 192 bits, which naturally gives us a net result of 384 GB per second of memory bandwidth. Now, the question remains, why 12 GB of DDR6 on such well, a budget card? Why, why not 8 GB or even 6 GB of DDR6 RAM? Well, Having a 192-bit memory bus means that you can only run your video card with either 6 or 12 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM. Not 8. If you wanted 8, you need a 256-bit memory bus. Counterintuitively, having 256 memory bus and less RAM, like 8 gigabytes, 
also means a higher memory bandwidth of 448 gigabyte per second. So having 12 gigabyte of RAM doesn't make it faster than 8 gigabyte. It helps with game buffering, but it doesn't make it a faster card. It's all about memory boss and the memory bandwidth it allows. So why AMD would do this is a question. Why would they spend extra memory money on a card with 12 gigabyte of DDR6 knowing that it would not run any faster than say 6 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM. First, marketing. Um, Nvidia was about to release its RTX 3060 budget gaming card, which I have reviewed and should be checking if you haven't done so yet, with only 6 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM and um, AMD really wanted to crush it and, and outspec it right on paper so that to attract more uh, buyers onto them, which, which partially did work. Second, crypto mining. Um, a, a crypto mining card really does not care so much about how many cores is available to it or even the memory bandwidth, but it really looks at how much fast memory is available to it. So having 12 gigabyte of very fast TDR6 RAM means a superior mining card in all of its aspects. But I will be covering the crypto mining quality of this card later on in this review. Now to power this rather impressive setup, we have no less than 1150 amps power stages organized in a 10 plus one configuration. That is 500 amps dedicated to run uh, that magnificent Navi 22 GPU, more than you'll ever need to even severely overclock it, because again, this is an overclocking video card by all means. Now, power consumption wise, the Radeon RX 6700 XT manages to sip a mere seven watts per hour on idle, but can roar up to a mighty 220 watts, 25 more than its RTX 3060 Ti counterpart, with bursts going well above 300 watts. So I would definitely advise to have at least a 600 watt power supply unit if you are going to rock this baby in your build. Now obviously this is still a lot of heat but I have to give it to AMD. With their reference card they have done an amazing job at keeping it cool at all time. First, we have this beautiful large and two slot tall fin stack block fed by three long and never ending copper pipes. And it does an impeccable job at radiating most of our GPU heat away. By the way, I love the black finish on it, absolutely gorgeous. It is dressed by two large 80 millimeter Delta fan, well, fans, which thanks to its dual bolt bearing can last up to a whooping 80,000 hours each, almost three times the lifespan of our typical fans. But most impressively, it does all that almost silently. The fans stop spinning when GPU temperature falls below 55 degrees Celsius, ensuring silence while engaged in lower intensity activities on your desktop. But when they do spin at full game load, well, they are almost silent, giving me a barely noticeable 35 decibels. Finally, I'd like to mention the VRM plating, which gives a first front line of heat dissipation to the card. An AMD chipset being notoriously harder than Nvidia's, it is a good sign to see one. And cooling wise, well, despite having a very uh, uh, electrical, hungry or thirsty GPU, they are very, very good. During a full hour stress test, the capacitor stayed at a cool 65 degrees Celsius, which is somewhat hotter than its NVIDIA counterpart, but much better than what AMD got us used to. I mean, remember the Vega uh, series? The GPU remained at about 70 degrees Celsius all along the stress test, which is equally impressive. Now, there is one thing I do want to mention, though. Uh, AMD did change uh, their their thermal design. First, they did close both rear and front sides of the cards to force air to exit on the sides of the card. Now, I'm not really sure I love that move because it means that all the hot air will be expelled on the side of the video card, meaning on at least one of them on the motherboard PCB itself, which is not a great idea. Now, I did not notice any problem. I, I, I did monitor my motherboard PCB temperature when I was running the video card at full load. I didn't see any weird, you know, happenings, but still in principle, I, I'm not in love with that. I'd rather ha have seen a grill plate on the video card iOS to naturally use it as an exhaust, but maybe something AMD on the reference card should take a look at for the next iteration of their video cards. 
I said it twice in an eye. Secondly, I took a look at the thermal pads. They are all one millimeter thick, but definitely on the cheaper side. So they will work fine for a normal two to three years, but after that, I would definitely suggest that you do change your thermal pads and replace thermal paste, which by the way, I have done an amazing video about just a short 10 days ago, and you should be absolutely checking, checking, because it's an amazing video I've done. And, and yeah, check it. Now, performances wise, because this is why we are here. So I did look at the usual suspect and try to make a mix of different uh, graphic engine and benchmarking software so that we have a more complete idea of what this card can do. Now, starting with 3D Mark. The RX 6700 XT scored between 11,400 and 12,000 points with an average of 11,500 points. That's above what the 3060 Ti can output. And same story with Mark, which showed an extremely stable 172 frames per second with its 1080 stress test. Absolutely gorgeous and something uh, uh, people should rejoice if they intend to use this video card with Blender, video editing or whatever production tool you have into your hand. But when it comes to gaming, the card is much less consistent. Now, Cyberpunk at 1080 with ultra settings was absolutely a pleasure to game with, averaging a solid 70 frames per second with a good amount above 80. That is 15 frames per second above what the RTX 3060 Ti uh, can output, its natural competition. At 1440p, where this card was placed and designed for, it holds a solid 55 frames per second all along, about 10 frames per second above the RTX 3060 Ti, but most importantly, about five frames per second above the mighty RTX 2080 Super, which is not small feet and a lot of hand gesticulation. But add some ray tracing at medium settings and the RX 6700 XT shows real faiblesse, averaging only 45 frames per second at 1080p, almost half of what the 3060 Ti can. Repeat at 1440p and the card simply melts down in a world of pain, struggling to output 20 frames per second and below. And that scenario repeats itself over and over on all the ray tracing games I tested. And in short, Despite the RX 6700 XT having a couple more retracing cores than the 3060 Ti, it absolutely cannot compete on real-time tracing. That's easily explainable by the fact that AMD is so late into the ray tracing game and lack uh, uh, the equivalent of the NVIDIA DLSS technology and tensor cores which do an amazing job at, at guessing the mid frames and, and upping the, the frames per second on, re, on real ray tracing gaming. And AMD has all its work ahead of it to, to plug that gap. And it's gonna take a few generations. So as it goes today, when it comes to classical gaming and production like Blender, this is about the best 1440p classic Cool gaming card you can have, but stay away from it if you're gonna, if you like, or if you're gonna do ray tracing gaming. That, that's as simple as I can put it. Now, last but not least, crypto mining, because when you have 12 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, all eyes are on you. Now, as Ethereum goes, the card could output 43 mega hash on my first try, which is not bad, but certainly a little lower than I expected. A little GPU underclocking, RAM overclocking, and under voltage, and I managed to push the hash at about 47 mega hash stable. Now, I do believe that given uh, a, a bit more time with the card and a little bit more tweak, I, I would have been able to go all the way to 50 or 52 mega hash per, se uh, per second stable, which is about what the RTX 3060 uh, is able to do, I'll remind you, cheaper NVIDIA competitors. So the RX 6700 XT, when it comes to crypto miner, does fairly well, but definitely is not the best, neither in cost when you buy it, but most importantly, when you compare it with its electrical consumption, the RTX 3060 will consume about 30% less electricity for the very same crypto production. Something which, by the way, gamers should be rejoicing about. 
Now, in conclusion, at about $480 MSRP before taxes, the Radeon RX 6700 XT comes with an $80 premium over its predecessor, and it competes against a wide range of Nvidia cards, spanning from the 3060 in crypto value to the 3070 for its 1440p gaming performances. And truth be told, it does that all very well. Its classical gaming performances place it comfortably between the 3060 Ti and the 3070, largely outperforming one and credibly posing itself as an alternative for the other. Its mining abilities without being groundbreaking compares well with the RTX 3060, which is one of the most profitable crypto miner cards out there. In short, the RX 6700 XT succeeds at being a white purpose card, something Nvidia is terrible at, and it fares very well at everything it does, unless obviously you're into ray tracing, in which case, stay away from any AMD card in general. Please make yourself that favor. But I have to give it to AMD for an upscale on the card engineering and overall quality. There is definitely a premium when you come from the Vega or even the 5000 series. Fans are well documented and easy to replace. Thermal pads are all of the same thickness, so easy maintenance for years to come. So in a nutshell, um, the Radeon RX 6700 XT 12G from Gigabyte or from anyone else really is about the very best classical gamer you can have at that price range. But obviously the whole struggle is to find one at or even close to MSRP pricing. But if you do, you never know. If you do, well, there is absolutely nowhere else you money needs and wants to be. Nowhere else.